We'll start our city council meeting. Thank you all for being here. Welcome to Easley on November the 13th. Our meeting started at seven o'clock and I would like to ask our councilman Jim Robinson to open us up in a prayer and immediately after that, if you don't mind, stand and uh, help us with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Mayor, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, next week is Thanksgiving. We are thankful for all the many blessings which you have bestowed upon us. We recently observed Veterans Day. We thank our veterans and current members of the military for their service to our country. We are thankful that we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. We are thankful that we have the opportunity and the right to vote for our elected officials. God bless those persons currently holding office, those who have been elected to office, and those to be elected. Help us to remember that Jesus taught us to love God and each other. We should do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Differences of opinion should not give rise to personal animosity. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Approval of the minutes. Are there any additions, deletions to the minutes? Would you? Okay, you speaking in. Okay, you got it. I, yeah, I forgot to tell her about. Please speak into your microphone. Um, on the the section where the council member was speaking, and I think Councilwoman Davidson had mentioned that Councilwoman Webb had said that um, she was told that she was filing a lawsuit against the city. It's not against the city of Eastley. It's actually against the individuals, which would be the mayor, Tommy, and the lady that works in the city. And each one had to get their own lawyers. The lawyer is not appointed from the city. Thank you. Anything else? That will, excuse me. And I understand what you just said, but that was not the discussion that happened and that the minutes reflect what was said at that meeting. That, that was said at the meeting. I just read it to you. So I was just making the correction here where you had said that Councilwoman Will said that the final lawsuit was against the city. And you felt that you had exhausted all avenues before doing so. <clears throat> yes, I had explored all avenues, so yes. Thank you. Anything else to be changed? If not, they will stand as written. Report from council members, Ward 1. Uh, Mayor, I'd just like to reiterate uh, part of Mr. Robinson's, uh, Mr. Robinson's invocation, and that is a very happy um, Thanksgiving to all. Like to, uh, that's really all I have, but I would like to turn it over to Chrisman to announce a really special award uh, we are going to be receiving uh, for the rec department. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Council. Um, I have with me Anna Kate. She is now a part time employee with the rec department, but this past summer, she was an intern from Clemson University. We're very proud of Anna Kate. She um, wrote an award for our department and I will let her tell you about the results. Thank you so much. So this week, the Easley Parks and Recreation Department was notified that we won the 2023 South Carolina Parks and Recreation Association Park Excellence Award for Nally Brown Park. The award will be bestowed upon us on December 13th at the annual SCRPA conference we are so thankful and blessed, and yeah. Okay, two. Yes, good.
Good evening, and I'd like to thank um, our veterans here in the room and those watching on live or YouTube. Um, thank you for your service and for fighting for our rights of free speech and um, to serve the citizens from the position from which we're elected. Thank you. Ward three. Well, again, all kudos to our veterans of foreign wars and domestic wars, and looking forward to a lovely Thanksgiving. Thank you. Ward four. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I do have a few people that are emailing me with complaints on uh, West Main Street, saying it's looking pretty bad over there with the, the, the buildings breaking down and whatnot over there. I've looked at it. I don't know if what's really changed. Nothing's really changed, but uh, anyway, I just thought I'd pass that on. I also want to thank the American Legion for their service. I'm an American Legion member as, as well, and a veteran is also. So I just want to thank the veterans as well. So thank you. Do you, have any, do you have any specific addresses so we can? I believe they're talking about close to the, across the, and I believe that's the area that they're talking about. Okay. Uh, some of the folks, I, I can get more specific, more specifics if you need me to. Yeah, if you would kind of get an address, sure. Yeah, we'll send them out there, but okay. it'd be nice to have exact Absolutely. address. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Ward five. Also, say happy Veterans um, Day to everyone. And happy Thanksgiving. And if, you, if you're old, we'll be blessed. Bless someone else. Thank you. Ward 6. No report. No report. <clears throat> Item 6 is update on city activity. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just want to, as mentioned in our prayer, we do have a an election yet to be uh, to be held. The runoff election is uh, November 21st. There's a vote uh, in the same precincts or polling places that you had to vote um, last Tuesday. Early voting is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8.30 to 5 at uh, Pickens County um, Office, uh, Elections Office, 222 McDaniel Avenue in Pickens. So just want to make sure everybody uh, knew about the election and where you could vote. And now I'd like to have uh, Danielle Hess give us an update on some of the Christmas activities that are scheduled. Hi everyone, my name is Danielle Hess. I'm the program events coordinator for the city. I would also like to talk about our past events. So our last Rock of the Pock was October 13th, and I want to thank everyone who came out and made that such a wonderful success. But also the treats on the street, I it was amazing. The, turn out there. I can't appreciate everyone enough for everyone's support and everyone coming out because I know that the kids all left really happy and they were all really excited to hang out with family and friends and the whole community and that was made me really happy coming from Usland and seeing everyone there. And I'd also like to talk about our upcoming events. We have our Christmas tree lighting on Black Friday which is November 24th. It's going to be right out at the city green and it starts at 5 30 and we also have Our care drives and our sample playwrights, so they actually are all sold out, which is amazing that it, they almost sold out the first day of me announcing that. And we are really excited about that. And we are partnering with Five Point again this year for that. We also have our market at Five Point, which is December 2nd, that's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We also have breakfast with Santa, and that is from 10 a.m. to noon. And you can look on our Facebook to for sign ups as well. Oh yes, there's almost 900 signed up for that, and we are not even December 2nd yet. That's awesome. Now we only have a thousand people, and so if you would like to, the whole family is welcomed, and you will get breakfast with Sammy. Is anybody? Oh. Sorry, I have one more thing. We're also really excited to partner with uh, Foothills Playhouse. We are going to have a movie night on uh, December 14th, and it will start at 6 p.m. If you just want to be on the lookout on the City of Easley's Facebook page as well as Easley Parks and Recreation page for more information to come on that. Okay. Is there going to be a waiting list for anybody that may want to sign up, those that maybe drop off that don't 
for the ride. Uh, five point three is actually the one that's handling the registration. She has not mentioned anything about a waiting list. I think what's happening is she's encouraged people to just keep checking um, the website in case there is any availability. But once they do purchase it, uh, I believe I've seen some people say that they purchase extra and they'd be willing to, to pass it along that way. Um, but she did not say that. I don't want to put her on the spot, but easily First Baptist celebrated their 150th anniversary yesterday. It was a great event for those that were there. Uh, if, if you weren't, they, they've done like a three-day event. It was great. So um, I know we have a little something coming up. So would you speak on a little bit of that about, you don't have to give all the plans yet, but. So um, some thoughts that we have had is talking about what makes Easley Easley. So maybe celebrating something each month for a whole year, and um, then also celebrating on our actual birthday, which forgive me, I believe in February. And so, and then also we're going, we did the 100th anniversary coins, and we plan on doing 150th anniversary as well. And just more things like that. But again, just really building what makes Easley Easley. I know coming, born and raised in Easley, there's a lot I can talk about, and I know that there's a lot of home or local businesses here and restaurants and everything like that that we can just really focus on. And also the historic part of Easley, and we just want to celebrate that because we are special and we want everyone to know about it. And the market on December 2nd, is that at five points? Yes, ma'am, it is. The rain location is the gymnasium. The only other thing that I'll mention that Danielle did is the Christmas parade is December the 9th, but that is uh, through this Easley Chamber if you'd like for information on that. We, we will be assisting with that, though. Our employees will be up. Yes, sir. Yes, we will be. <clears throat> okay. Item 7 is going to be postponed to a little further uh, down the agenda uh, so we can get either approved or disapproved our new ordinance. So item eight is unfinished business, second reading. Second reading of ordinance 2023-15 to amend section 30.25. Do I hear a motion? Second. Yes, sir. Uh, this does amend the current ordinance that we have and uh, what it does is uh, allows us to adopt by resolution a policy, which we'll cover later. And uh, again, this is second reading. And the policy, uh, I'll go ahead and read. I'll just kind of cover the policy now. The policy we're going to adopt, or is going to be up for vote for, to, to adopt, is uh, allows for 30 minutes of speaking. Each speaker can have three minutes. You don't have to be a resident of our citizen of Easley. And it's on a first come, first served basis. And the policy, or the night that we're speaking, you can be ex it can be extended that night uh, by a motion seconded and then a majority vote of council. Any questions? Council. No call, question. Call a question. <laughs> <clears throat> call for the question. All in favor of this ordinance, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Item nine is ordinance. First reading. A is first reading of ordinance 2023-14 to amend the physical year's budget 2023 and 2024. I hear a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Mayor Council, this is uh, this is to order a uh, gravel truck, a brush truck. It was approved in last year's budget. We had two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it was ordered last year. It took eighteen months to to get it, build it, and, and deliver it to us. The money was not moved from last year's budget to this year's, so the money was never spent. The current price is, uh, is correct, 269944 which is in the ordinance. And uh, this allows us to purchase the truck, which will be here in December. 
Any questions on that? This tends to be a normal thing for us with the supply chain. We're not getting our stuff in a timely manner. Do I hear a call for question? Call for the question. Call for the question. All in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Item B, first reading of ordinance 2023-16 to approve an agreement with Duke Energy. Do I hear a motion? Motion brings in full. Second. And uh, we're, Tom, you got that? Yes, sir. I will say we do have a representative from Duke here if we need to have questions. The uh, current uh, uh, current franchise fee is 3.35%, which Duke pays uh, the city for all customers living within the city limits. I'd like to raise that to 5%, which is the maximum allowed by state law. And uh, it matches what the easily combined utilities, Charter, AT&T, and Blue Ridge are all paying 5%. This just raises that up to, uh, to the five like everyone else is. Uh, I came in just late on the work set. Was this initiated by Duke Power or initiated by the city of Duke? Uh, Duke Power and Duke Energy. Okay. Uh, Duke Energy requests to increase the fee. Okay, it was both. I'm told. Yes, sir. We've we've uh, we've already sent it to Duke, and they've they've looked at it and they've approved it. We do have a representative, though, Brian, if you need to ask a question. I, I don't have a specific question. Thank you, though. We're just trying to get uniform with each utility agency. Call for discussion. I'll call for question. Call for question. All in favor of this, raise your right hand. Any opposed? I'm C. First reading of ordinance 2023-17 to rezone approximately 5.6 acres located on Cumberland Avenue. I hear a motion. Motion to bring to the floor for discussion. We have a second. Have a second. Okay. This is uh, five properties that are currently do uh, zoned as uh, industrial shown there in pink or red and uh, like the rezone planning commission has already approved to rezone those as general commercial this is the same location that we were able to give a historical confirmation to a few months ago that mayor or whomever can answer uh, general commercial from what does the designation we're going from from industrial industrial to general commercial yes sir would someone like to maybe explain the difference Mario The main reason is uh, you cannot sell industrial zone. The only thing you can really sell industrial zone is tattoos. Uh, it was felt that he wanted to make some sort of uh, retail, meeting spot, restaurants. Uh, that's my guess. He's, I'm not sure if he's here or not. Uh, but he wants to develop this into a, a nicer area. And industrial zone allows us to sell. Um, based on planning theory, this would be a down zoning, and it would go from a more intense to a less intense use on that piece of property. And uh, the idea of having industrial use allowed close to residential 
is something that is not a good idea. If you think of Bhopal, India, and the number of people who died who lived in residential areas close to industrial, um, that's the basis for not having industrial this close to residential. But a couple of uh, weekends ago, I went to breakfast and walked in on a breakfast meeting at Bojangles with many of the, um, the candidates for election and the developer. I don't understand what was going on at the meeting. I had no way of knowing. But I think it's interesting that there was a meeting, unadvertised, of course, because they're not elected officials. Um, but there was a meeting, and the developer was there, and then it appears on our, um, our agenda. Don't know what went on in the meeting, but based on my observation, I don't think I can support this. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> call the question. Just one other thing, if I, if I may. If this does fail, they have to wait one year to come back. Is that correct? To the same zone. Right. Okay. Can we have a call for the question? All in favor of this Our ordinance, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Item D, first reading of ordinance 2023-18 to amend the physical budget 23-24 to assist with the Crestview Road roundabout. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Anyone? Okay. <clears throat> Mayor Council, this is a uh, is a request from the Pickens County Transportation <laughs> Committee for uh, money to uh, basically finish uh, uh, get enough money to to build the roundabout at the intersections of Crestview and Sheffield Roads. The uh, initial price that was based on our initial estimate, the, the uh, actual bid came in quite a bit higher, so they're asking for help with that in the tune of $400,000 from the city. And 165,000, we propose 165,000 of that to come from the impact feed in our transportation revenue line item. That'll leave about $100,000 in that line item if there's any other work that needs to be done, uh, emergency-wise or anything like that. And then uh, <clears throat> we propose to reallocate 200 and, uh, 35,000 from the uh, North uh, North Side School project, which uh, when we do this, if this is approved, then that project will be um, terminated for this year. We'll have to rebudget it for next year if we decide to do that for a total of 400,000. Questions and comments? And I think I'll just I'll just say if you, <laughs> anyone drives through that intersection, something has to be done, okay? And I, Senator Rice, thank you for your work on this. And um, you know I think uh, it's been beaten to death, but um, a four-way stop does not work. Uh, he's explained in detail why a red light would um, really not work, uh, just like a four-way stop sign. And I think this is uh, a good step forward for that particular intersection. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton, that the intersection completely. Um, 
I will say Senator Rice has worked tirelessly to get this project going and also a roundabout in the Canaan land area. He does have money for that, so that will be probably started later on and probably next year, I guess, because it's this year, there's no way. And again, that's no fault of his. Uh, I know personally that a couple of utilities companies had to, said it'd be six months before they could move their utilities in this roundabout. So that, that postponed a lot of it. And uh, I think they found some issues there as they did move some of their utilities. So that's postponed that. And I think that's what made the price go up a little bit. When you postpone something for six months, not your fault, but it does happen. But for the citizens that travel that every day, I think it's well worth it. Yes, and I'd like to say that I've had several conversations with Senator Rice about the same project. He's explained the complexities, the delays, and how the costs have increased over that period of time. And I think this will be a welcome project for those that deal with that intersection constantly. And I also want to thank Senator Rice for um, working with me for the Canaan project also. Um, he worked very diligently with that and made sure the money was allocated for that um, intersection. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other comments? Call for question. Call for question. All in favor of this ordinance, raise your right hand. Any opposed? <coughs> Item 10, new resolutions. Resolution 2023-11 to adopt policy for persons addressing council. Do I hear a motion? Okay. Second. Second. And remember this is a resolution only takes one vote. This month we'll do it. <coughs> Yes, yeah, so I can. I'll uh, reiterate the high points again. So this limits the uh, time to speak to 30 minutes, three three minutes per speaker, first come, first serve basis. But it can be voted on by a motion and a, a second from council and a majority mm -hmm. vote to extend that time limit past 30 minutes. Would this go into effect? Today or next month? Today. That's why we postponed the Call the question, Mayor. Call for a question. All in favor of this resolution, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? Council discussion, approval of accommodations tax distributions. I hear motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Tom. Yes, sir, Mayor. This is a uh, accommodations tax committee has met. We estimate about a hundred thousand dollars to uh, come in this year from their A tax, and the uh, state law is the first twenty-five thousand is uh, goes into the city's general fund. The next 5% goes into the city's general fund. Uh, the next 30% of the remainder goes to uh, the chamber. And the remainder after you deduct all that is divided in accordance with the ATAX committee's recommendations. And the, uh, you can see the, the uh, percentages up there that have, they've been uh, recommended. If 100,000 is too high or too low, the, those percentages will go stay the same, just the dollar amount will change. Um, and we get, we get our uh, money back from the state quarterly, and we distribute it as soon as we get it to uh, end these percentages that you see here. And so once this is uh, voted on and approved, then we can send out the first checks. We just got the first uh, amount back this past week. 
Any questions? No question, but Tom, the uh, ATAX, well, just for FYI, um, ATAX is accommodations tax for the city of Easley. And then secondly, um, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> you wanted to tell them. Huh, you wanted, sir? You wanted to tell them that this is an estimated amount of money. It, it is an estimated amount of money. That's not necessarily what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, accommodations tax and, oh, so the part about the general fund, that is dictated by law. Um, so that, that percentage, um, again, is dictated to go back into the general fund. And that's, again, by law. So just FYI. I hear a motion. Call for a question. Yeah. Call the question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Call Wake for, up. Call, yeah. Call for a question. Second. Okay. All in favor of this accommodations tax, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Okay, we will go back to item seven. Citizens wishing to address city council. And I will turn it over to Jennifer. Matthew Wilson. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> you ready? No. Right. Mayor and Council, my name is Matthew Littleton, and I had the honor of being your fire chief until I retired in December of 2022. I am a 20 year plus resident of the city. Recently, I was at supper with my family here in town when a friend stopped by our table to say hello. During the conversation, my friend stated, I hate what they did to you. I was kind of taken aback, and I soon learned after several other conversations that apparently it's folklore, it's whatever, that I was run off by the mayor. And uh, it kind of took me. And so I started talking and started finding out what was going on. And uh, I, I want to let you know that Nothing could be farther from the truth. I don't have any idea where this originated, or I'm not even going to speculate, but I want you and council and everybody here to know it didn't originate from me. I was blessed. I was honored to be here. And this city took care of me and my family for a long time. The truth of the matter is, is last year, last summer, we received some unsettling news in my family that was going to require much more time of me than I could give while I was fire chief. After almost 30 years, I chose my family. I want to assure everyone that neither the mayor nor council nor anyone in this city administration ran me off. Nobody encouraged me to leave, retire, resign. In fact, it was quite the opposite with many encouraging me to stay. Mayor, council, easily. It was truly an honor to serve you and to serve this community. And I couldn't be more proud of what Brad and Josh are doing with the fire department today. Thank you. First off, I want to say that I'm, I was reading this and it said that you have to be a resident of the city, but you've just passed an ordinance that, and I've, I've been in the city for 48 years. But I, I come to you today to, to tell you that I've just learned that some loans that I had taken to rehab rental properties of mine have been, uh, well, they were forgiven last year. Uh, I've used those loans over in, in some properties that weren't great. Um, and last year at some time we got a letter and said, your loans have been forgiven. Well, thank you. I didn't know why, but <laughs> I had nothing else. I took the letter, I gave it to my accountant, I paid taxes on that because I had a forgiveness of debt. And uh, it, cost, uh, it cost on up there. But I, I just don't understand why it had to be put out in the public, basically maybe to try to make me look bad or somebody else look bad, I don't know. But I'm gonna tell you something, I don't have to look bad. My properties I have done 
have been, they have been under rented. I'm, by that I mean people have not paid market prices for my property. And just so everybody knows, every one of my properties are going back to the good Lord from whom they came. And I, they're going to, I, quite frankly, I've, I'm working on, have been working on a trust to, to, for the properties to be used to provide income for Miracle Hill, the Salvation Army, my church, and one other outfit up in Dacusville. So if the idea was to make somebody feel bad, uh, it didn't make me feel bad because I've done nothing wrong. But it just looks to me like I just I think it's a pretty bad invasion of privacy. And my properties are, you know, I, I've under rented. I had a guy and his mom over here on Third Street. And pitiful people, pitiful people. And sometimes got paid, sometimes I didn't for about for about 18 years. And we didn't push them out. They've had to finally leave. But. So I don't know what the intent was, but I don't appreciate it because it, it, I, I think the intent was to make me look bad, but it doesn't bother me because I know what it's all about and I know what I've done with those properties. So thank you. And we apologize for that happening. Eddie Beamer. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, thank you for the opportunity to address you. Your kind considerations and allowing freedom of speech is much appreciated. I am a businessman here in town and head of the Cornerstone Foundation, which is an international trust, and um, have lived here now for more than 20 years. My wife and her family have been here longer than that. She is a retired doctor and uh, professor. And we enjoy living in Middle Creek, and we appreciate all of the work the city does. I have been uh, deeply concerned and happened to be in town today so that I could say something about the acrimony that has developed in this uh, mayoral election. And uh, I've even had people call from different parts of the country saying, you're making international news down there. Uh, with the conflict in our discussion of how to go forward. Now, I uh, have invested, my wife and I and our families, a lot of money in Easley, and uh, have two businesses here, and have great appreciation for this city and its mayor, and uh, do support him. And I appreciated your prayer, Councilman. I believe that we ought to be people of peace. It doesn't mean we're in a box and we can't talk about things and debate things, and we ought to do that. But I was thinking about Dan Hunt's comments a moment ago. I've been very much concerned about a loan summary report that was sent out to a council lady here and then was distributed to people outside the council. That is... That is information that is protected by law. And I wondered why I wasn't hearing anything about this. Someone told me all about it and I asked, I asked the city for information and received it. And that causes more and more angst and animosity and adversarial dispositions. Uh, we're on different pages of the handbook. There's no question about it. There's two people running for mayor who have different positions on growth. And I, quite frankly, uh, have a lot of regard for everybody involved, except it is patently wrong, unutterably sad, inexpressibly tragic when someone gets an unfair advantage by spending time sending out information protected by law and causing a lot of conflict. I beg you these last days before the next election, let's look better. Let's do better. I'm finished? Can I take up an offering now? I am an ordained minister. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Mr. Mayor and to the, uh, the council, uh, I'm Alma Ferguson, 241 Baker Court. And I am here tonight to, for just a little bit of information on, you know what I'm gonna speak about, is our intersection down at Cana. <clears throat> and at Olive Street and Glenwood Road and Cana Drive. I've lived in that subdivision since it was established in 1968. And it has, over the last years, when all this development started, it is worse. Now, I was almost hit twice last week, and I just usually stop, because nobody else is going to stop and let you out. And we've had meetings on this council, and I've talked to uh, Senator Rice. He probably don't remember my name, but I've called it. And we need to have something done. And I was told that that money was appropriated for that intersection, whether it was going to be a red light or a roundabout. Then, just lately, I heard that the city has taken that money and reappropriated for another subdivision. I just, I, I don't like rumors. I like for somebody, if they're not going to do it, to tell us and not let it be out here around, just like they were talking about it. We are supposed to be a loving town, a Christian town. And I've lived here all my life and worked here all my life. And all this stuff that's going on now is not the easily that I was born into. So let's just do something about it. We can do well, it. Well, number one, you, you were talking about why. <clears throat> the city does not have that money to do that roundabout. It's the state. Well, the state the or whoever has it. <laughs> well, do the city not have anything to do with it? Well, the state, who should I be talking to that with the state? Belong, that road belongs to the state. You're looking at the young gentleman right back there. <laughs> right here, right here. Well, well, now that's the one I'm going to talk to. See, I've been talking to you. <laughs> and and that's, that's what, because, you know, you've been saying, you know, they've been telling me that, that we're going to get a roundabout. We're going to look at that. We're having our uh, engineers looking at it and stuff. So now, I want something done because I'm 88 years old. Okay. I don't want to take all that. Okay. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Kent Dykes, been a resident of Easley for 48 years, so uh, this is my home. And I'm here not to speak uh, uh, for myself, or, um, but I'm here at, on the request of the uh, Easley Combined Utilities, and they're having their meeting tonight, so it's conflicting with them, but they're asking me to come to to speak to clarify some misinformation that has been given out about some negotiations back in 2022. Uh, back in the early part of 2022, uh, they were uh, needed to expand the Middle Creek branch uh, plant, a water plant, it was going to be expanded. And they came to the city to this, and, this, and the council and asked for the funds to do this because um, they knew that the uh, ARPA money, which we often call it the COVID relief fund that came from the federal, was, was given to uh, the city. And so they would like some of that to help pay for this uh, plant. Uh, well, the money had already been allocated through the city to other projects, first, first come, first serve. So the money had already been allocated. So they were denied. So they went back and went to the state, and uh, the terminology, forgive me for reading this, the state revolving fund to borrow the money to make this expansion. Two and a half million dollars was the expansion at that time. At that time. So the state loaned it to them at 1.5% interest. 1.5% interest. Uh, they, they accepted the money and, and took it and put it into some other funds, uh, saving funds that was uh, earning significantly more than 1.5% interest. 
So as a result, they've got the money and it's helping to pay uh, the interest profit, if you will, from this money is helping to pay for this. So it, it turned out to be a very good investment on their part because they're actually making a little bit of money on it. Uh, the, the amount of money they borrowed was $4 million uh, to go against the expansion of this plant. Now, it was uh, suggested, alleged, that the uh, rates, your water rate, our water rates, increased as a result of, the, uh, of this fund that was denied, denied, totally incorrect, according to the easily combined utilities. The rates went up as a normal yearly rate increase, and it was not because the mayor, the council, denied these funds. So I just this is a clarification that they've given. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Fetter. Mayor, council, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak today. First of all, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope everyone has a safe and um, healthy Thanksgiving. Um, want to thank everyone that attended the uh, fundraiser for the museum. It was a big success for us and um, we're very pleased with that. Um, I was gonna speak tonight on the same issue that Mr. Hunt and Mr. Beaver did, so I'm not going to belabor that and, and go over it anymore. Um, the fact that this money was made available through a federal grant, um, it was allocated fairly and properly, um, it was a for forgivable loan, and I don't think it was right, it may have been legal, but I don't think it was right to publicize names of folks that uh, took advantage of the, uh, the loan money. Um, apparently that's a, uh, an example of what's happening now and it needs to stop. It's not fair. We need to go back to solid, good background of government and governess and you know, let the people speak, let y'all speak. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council. I have a few questions to ask. How, so, much, so far, everybody that's been up here has lived here over 20 years, correct? How many know about the city of, of Greenville and how much it's grown? Probably all of you. And we don't want growth? Uh, I don't understand. Greenville is one of the top cities in the state. People are coming here to easily because it's affordable. Greenville's for activity, yes, and business. We can't get business here if we don't have a residential community that people can move to. People want to move here, but we're chasing them away because we don't want any more development. I bet you the mayor in the city of Greenville didn't think that because he got reelected again because the city of Greenville is just booming. The other question I ask is why aren't we doing anything about it to make these changes instead of just protesting that this is the wrong thing to do? Why are we saying the mayor hasn't achieved anything? Have you list, looked at his achievements? And if you haven't, you need to because there's a runoff and you need to know what he stands for and what he has done for our city. That's all I have to say and I think you need to vote your conscience. My name is Pam Pickle, and I have been a um, lifelong citizen of Easley and have enjoyed most every bit of it. Um, I have been coming to these meetings for about six, seven months and have observed a lot. I've been very disappointed um, at some divisiveness that I see among council, and I've come upon a meeting um, back in early October, or maybe it was late September, but. Um, it seemed to me there was a group trying to stir the pot with things. And I have addressed council person that 
this ap applies to. Um, not satisfied, but not my ward either. Brian, you've done a great job for our ward and I appreciate it. Um, I would like to see us learn how to have different opinions and disagreements. That's one of the things wrong with America. Just because I don't agree with you doesn't mean I hate you. We need to learn to live together and not be so condescending and so divisive in what we do and what we say. And um, I appreciate the time that all the council members give, the mayor, all of you ladies and gentlemen over here. You keep our city going. And it is a good place to live, but let's keep it that way. Um, another point that I wanted to bring up was about credentials for serving in um, the mayor's position. Qualifications are there for a reason. And when we vote next Tuesday, let's remember there's one that has qualifications. There's another that has not served on city council or government. Can that person do the job? Likely, very likely. But I appreciate what you have done, Mayor Womack, and the instrument and encouragement you've been to even our grandson. Thank you. Thank you all for speaking. I do have a couple of things to clarify on my end, and tonight seems like the time to do it. But we have a councilman, council person, that enjoys going around and re recording all of our employees every time she talks to them. Then she takes the snippets, plays them back to the community, to benefit her. Well, let me tell y'all something. We've got a policy inside our employee manual that prohibits that. But we're allowing a council person to do it. And that is wrong. The other thing we have, and we have it in our hand, is an email where this same council person emailed a password out to another lady that just got elected so she could get on our city computer from her house. That's wrong, folks. That's wrong. It's in writing right here. She wrote it. In fact, that lady even emailed her back, and it's right here. It says, well, it sure is funny. There's a Holcomb on there, isn't there? Isn't that a coincidence? Speaking about Mr. Holcomb right over here, he was not on that, that, that form. It was a lady, and, and Nancy will tell you, she lived just a few blocks from here. But this lady thought it was funny because we had a Holcomb on there, and she was spreading your information of loans that were forgiven. They were forgiven because that's what that money was given to us for. That money was given to the city to help the elderly, the handicap, the less privilege. That's what it was for. We were trying to think of ways to use it to benefit those folks and not choose one over the other. That man sitting right over there, Dan Hunt, he'll tell you he, he could afford to pay that payment, but we couldn't choose to make Dan Hunt keep paying it and the rest of them be forgiven. We forgive all of them. The money come from the federal government but back in the 80s, 88, 89, I can't remember the year, Bill Carr was here. Bill Carr chose to make you have a little skin in the game to give a little back, to make a payment, just a small payment back to the city. And for years, that payment back to the city was used to reinvest, to loan Cindy money to redo her house, or loan Cindy money to put a new roof on her house. But you had to pay it back. Small interest rate. But we have somebody here that has tried to smear the people. And I can tell you now, for those that have heard it, and I asked her that day to resign, she didn't know why, and she didn't know what I knew. But I'm telling you what I knew. I knew what she had done. 
Thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Mr. Mayor, now please have a question. Yes, sir, you can. If it's something that pertains to what we're talking about tonight. Yes, sir, it is. Okay, just step up to the podium there, sir. You know, I lived in this city for over 30 years. Held a job at a respectable business for over 20 years. But my name has been put into this system that was passed out by one of these council members, and I'm not sure who it is. Not sure that where they're not liable for me to come in and sue them. I was unable, I just found out about this over the weekend, I was unable to get in touch with my attorney today, but I am going to my attorney over here. But my name has been published. It's, a, it's a, against privacy. And it's not my name, but it's my last name. Mm -hmm. So I am definitely going to an attorney, and I'm going to resolve this one way or the other with this councilman once I find out who it is. And I heard this gentleman a while ago say it was a lady. Well, there's only three ladies on this council. What's your name? Pardon me, sir. What's your name? I'm Sherwood Kaiser. Sherwood Kaiser. Well, that narrowed it down to one, didn't it? <clears throat> Ma'am, I don't know what your idea is or why you did that. You need to apologize to a whole lot of people. Council, thank you for allowing me to speak. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it, let me ask that. Is there anyone else in here that's here tonight because their name is on this list? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're on that list. Y'all are on that list? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank y'all. Motion to adjourn. I'll probably already get that.